Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Jim Fitzpatrick, exclusively on ASBN.com. Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick, you're watching another edition of The Small Business Show exclusively right here at ASBN.com and now streaming on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. According to Team Stage, 94% of entrepreneurs and 88% of job seekers say that a healthy culture at work is vital for success. Joining us now to discuss more on this topic is Chief Scientist of Workplace Culture at Culture Partners, author and keynote speaker Jessica Kriegel. Jessica has been uh, featured on CNN, Wall Street Journal, and Forbes Magazine. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Jessica. Thank you for having me. Sure. So um, for those that might not be as familiar with you and your background as we are here at the show, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your expertise. Absolutely. Well, I got my very first corporate job in 2008 after graduating from my MBA and had a terrible culture experience. <laughs> I was working in what everyone would describe as a toxic environment. And I was the original quiet quitter, I like to say, before it was even a term. I called it going dark at the time, but I just went dark. I did the absolute bare minimum because I felt like the life was getting sucked out of me when I was at work every day. And I committed, because of that negative experience, to figuring out how to create better workplace environments because we spend all of our day there. I went back, I got my doctoral degree in educational leadership and management and human resources development. I spent 10 years at Oracle doing culture transformation work internally. And then off I went to, to Keynote and now I'm with Culture Partners, which is a culture consulting firm researching best practices in workplace culture, which is my absolute passion. Well, then you are the expert that we have been looking for here at ASBN. <laughs> so uh, welcome to our show. We very much appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule there. As, as a workplace culture expert, how do you define workplace culture? Oh, this is my favorite question because I talk to CEOs all day long and if you ask every single CEO uh, what they define culture as, they'll all give you a different answer. There isn't a general consensus and I want the world to come around this one answer. Very simple. It's the way that people think and act to get results. That's it. It's just how we think and act at work to get results. Isn't that easy? Yes. But when you say, you say that, but then you say, well, the culture there was terrible. Is that, that's what you're referring to? Is that, yeah, the is way that, that people is that were toxic thinking and acting. Yeah, at, they were thinking and acting in very negative ways. Everyone was out for themselves. They were talking down to each other. There was no camaraderie. We weren't focused on results. We were focused on egos there. And it just felt icky. You can yeah. just tell. You can just tell. Sure. What are some of the misconceptions that entrepreneurs may have about workplace culture? Ugh, that it has anything to do with ping pong tables. Ping pong tables <laughs> are not culture. But we Neither have we have bean bags and free snacks. What do you mean? Exactly. Well, then your culture must be wonderful. <laughs> no, that's not. It. Those are interesting perks. And another thing that isn't culture is the leadership retreat. That's where most people do their quote culture work. But that's not it either. That's just getting together. It's building relationships. What you want to do when you're crafting intentional culture is you want to focus on the way that people think and act in their everyday job in order to drive results for the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's so important today. There's no question about it. I will ask you this. What you know because we were seeing so many. Uh, people that are now working remotely. Um, and from the, what I'm reading, this is taking a big hit on the culture of the company for obvious reasons. Uh, people are not together. They're not able to share ideas except through maybe Zoom or maybe once a year through a retreat like you just mentioned where they get everybody together and everybody's on their best behavior and then they go back to their home offices never to see that individual up close and personal again, right? So talk to us about that. Yeah, I think that's a misconception that culture is somehow being lost because we're working virtually. The reality is the people who think that or who are trying to force people back into the office <laughs> are saying that because they think culture is the water cooler chat and the thirsty Thursdays and the, you know, bring your dog to work day or, you know, the Hawaiian shirt Fridays. That's not culture. Culture, if culture is how we think and act to get results, it's really based on the experiences that we create for each other. When I have an experience with my boss, the tone that he uses when he speaks to me, the, the emoji that he sends in the text, that's an experience that leads me to a belief about whether he cares about me or not, what's important to him. And those beliefs that I hold about the company, about my leadership, about my peers, that's what drives my actions and that's what gets the company results. So 
we can be intentional about our experiences virtually, the, the way that you write an email, how often you pick up the phone, the way you are when you do come together in person for those retreats, those are all experiences that we can be really f conscious of creating so that we're driving the right beliefs and getting the right actions at work. Sure, sure. Can a bad culture be turned around pretty easily? Yeah, it really can. And it doesn't need to take three years to do it. We can see results with our clients within a few months. The number one thing you need to do in order to drive a great culture is get clear on what results you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Clarity of results will drive engagement. It will drive uh, personal development. It drives so much. It is the foundation. So you get clear on results. Then you identify what actions you want people to take. And then instead of just focusing on those actions, which is the action trap, what a lot of people leaders do is they just focus on what to do. Coach to the beliefs that your employees need to have in order to take that action proactively. And you do that by creating intentional experiences. It's a simple framework, but once you understand it, you can create phenomenal growth in your organization. Sure, sure. Is this kind of a generational situation where maybe boomer uh, owners of companies or leaders don't really get the whole culture thing? They think, well, we're paying them well, and we've got a great benefits program, and we give them ample time off, so what more do they need? While Gen Z and, and millennials are going, okay, you've completely missed it. Yeah, you know, there's a common misconception that these generations are wildly different. I actually wrote a book about this. It's called Unfairly Labeled because there's so many stereotypes we associate, not just with younger generations, but with older generations too. What's really happening is employee expectations are shifting and that's happening across the board. We then like to blame the younger generations for making that shift happen. But 2,500 years ago, Socrates was complaining about young people saying that they value chatter in, instead of hard work. The complaints haven't even changed about why we don't like the younger generation. It's not a generational thing. Most of the changes and differences you see are life stage issues. And so we're a lot more similar than we are different. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. So that, and, and by the way, they weren't dealing with cell phones back then or the internet. That's right? true, so that, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's interesting though, they have uh, studies that show that the adoption rate of technology at work is not different across generations. Personal use is different, but when we're in the workplace, everyone adopts new technology at the same rate. So hmm. that stereotype about older people not being tech savvy, not really true at work. Yeah, interesting, that is interesting. So uh, for the people that are watching, what are some of the steps toward building a better uh, workplace culture? I know that's a loaded question and we could do probably five shows just on that, but can you kind of give us some of the high, high points that we should yeah, be focused on? I that's a great question. So if the foundation of culture is in the experiences we create for each other, we need to get really conscious of the experiences that we create with our peers and our team and our bosses, everyone, right? And there's three really simple experiences that you can start to focus on. Experiences of seeking feedback, experiences of giving recognition to your peers, and experiences of telling stories. Those three experiences that you create are powerful motivators that create the right beliefs in your team if you tell those stories and you give that recognition and you ask for that feedback appropriately. And that's going to drive the kind of actions that you see. So start giving more recognition, tell more stories of people doing things well, and ask for feedback as much as you possibly can if you want to drive a culture that gets results. Yep, yep, for sure. Um, wrapping up, what's the one piece of advice that you'd like to leave our audience with today? In addition to there some of the great things that you just pointed out. Yeah, you know, there is so much that is vying for our attention right now. Social media, the news, the bad news and good news, the people, the activities that we have to do at work, our children. I mean, you're constantly being spread thin. Yeah. And in the work that you're doing, focus less on the actions and the activities that need to be done at work and focus more on the people that you're working with. Give them your full attention and your heart. And when you do that, people feel cared for. And when people feel cared for, then they care about the work that you're doing and you'll get the results a lot faster than you realized. It's, it sounds like a plan to me. Jessica Kriegel, Chief Scientist of Workplace Culture at Culture Partners, uh, keynote speaker and author. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know that our audience is gonna get a lot out of this uh, segment. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Jim Fitzpatrick, exclusively on ASBN.com.